Shabbat Shalom. Um, I'll introduce uh, first our um, visitor, invited. Uh, Jesus Carrasco was born in 1972 in, uh, in the city of Badajoz in Extremadura, a less known area of Spain, uh, in the border with Portugal. He was a publicist, advertiser. One year or so, he was a teacher, physical uh, education teacher. And in 2013, 2013, he published his first novel, Tachat Kipat Hashemayim, in Spanish, A la Interperie, in English, Out in the Open. And lately, he published his second novel, La Tierra Que Pisamos, The Earth We Tread, Adama Shealea Anachnu Dorchim. It's still not translated into a Hebrew. Meir Shalev was born in Nahalal. Before he was a writer, he was working as a teacher in evening school, grammar teacher. He worked um, at, um, at the Israeli television and then in the front with a program, interview programs. And about 40 years old, he published his first novel, Roman Roussi, which was translated into uh, uh, a, a variety of languages, within them Spanish. And then he published, um, Roman, Roman Roussi was, was, was the first uh, novel, Esav, Keyamim Achadim, Beveito Bamidbar, Fontanella, Yona Venar, Adavar Ayakacha, books about Bible, and uh, books for children. He also had a um, nice activity with children before this morning. Um, part of his uh, novels was translated into Spanish, among them uh, Roman Roussi, Montaña Azul, Que Yamim Achadim Por Amor a Judith, and Yona Venar, uh, El Chico de las Palomas. I would like to start with a uh, recommendation, very brief and decisive, recommendation that Mayer wrote about Jesus' novel, and it goes like this. New book. Well, after one year or two of fatigue books, I left in the middle. Books which are okay, that somehow I managed to finish, and good books that I successfully finished. Finally, I read a really good book, from the beginning till the end, without stopping. A book which plot is attractive and made by an artist with interesting and well-built characters. A book without, without love stories, but written and read, in my case, with passion. A book that didn't suffocate me with an overdose of psychology, that doesn't try to educate me or tell me something about moral or politics. I very much liked this book. Its name is Outdoor in Temperia. And its author, author is a and his author is a Spanish writer and well translated by Tal Nitzan. There might be readers who will be uncomfortable with its intensity and hardness, but that's their problem, not mine. Jesus, I would like you to know that to get this recommendation from an author like Mayer, it's it's very big thing. <laughs> Mayer, would you like to now that you know him, say s something more? I, I still recommend this book. I, I read it again uh, to remember more details before we before we we meet here. And I met Jesus last night, and I must tell you, I was I was really excited because uh, uh, Jesus is uh, much younger than I am, but uh, we have some similarities. I think we both published our first novel at the age of forty, which is rather late to, to start a literary uh, career. And when I read him, I could feel the, the intimate contact and knowledge he has with his landscape, with his nature, with the people he, he writes about. Uh, we both uh, have connection to rural uh, areas, each in our land. And I really felt I, I found um, uh, a younger Spanish brother, uh, unlike our prime minister, who found <laughs> whose younger brother appeared as a as as, as a Spanish uh, uh, nobility uh, just last week, then 
I found a, a, a real uh, a Spanish brother in literature. So I'm very happy for this occasion of uh, meeting you and talking to you. I'm happy, really happy to be here. Salam Shabbat, and thank you for coming. What can I say? Mary Shalev talking this about me, my, my work is, is amazing. Of course, it's my first novel, and I have never expected to be here, to be translated, um, and to receive this kind of words or kind from you. So I'm going to my room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be here. No, it's great. We have um, we met personally yesterday for the first time. Um, I felt something that I knew as a kind of connection, because we our biography are similar in some ways. We we are from rural parts of our countries, and that's a really important thing because um, when you grow up in the uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, hello, when you grow up in the countryside or in you know, out in the open, you deal with nature, uh, you deal with mm, the way that the people extract the food for from the land, and you are out in the open. And that gives you some, I don't know, some kind of different personality to this people who grew up in the city. I remember when, when, I, was, when I went to Madrid to study in the university and I left my village when I was 19, I remember perfectly there, I, can, I, I could recognize perfectly the people who came from outside of Madrid and the people from Madrid. I don't know why. And I think this connection is possible even in different countries. Mm -hmm. And I can have more um, um, similar things with you than a person who lives in Madrid or in Barcelona in, in my own country. Um, and I appreciate that yesterday, yesterday evening when we meet and, and I say, okay, some, is some kind of brother, and not just in literature and life, because we have uh, the same the same origin in some ways. It's uh, interesting because both books have some uh, brotherhood between men, yeah. right? Uh, your book is lack of women at all. Uh, even the act, the, the the secret we get to know is something that happened. Violence between men. Uh, and in your book, there is women. There are women, yeah. but a woman is also the, the narrator of, of the it's book. It's another way. She's, yeah. she's like uh, behind, and it's it's also a, a nice brotherhood between you of uh, rural or um, but also countryside. Also, both books um, deal with uh, with brutality in a way that for me w was new when I wrote it. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Stein Dubé, which is a, a brutal book in a way, uh, something that I never wrote before. Uh, I had revenges in my other, my other novels before, but not this kind of revenge that I described in, in Stein Dubé, Two She-Bears. And, and, uh, and uh, I dealt with, uh, with um, D deeper and, and more difficult layers of, of uh, personality of my characters and maybe even of myself. And then when I, I saw the way uh, Jesus deals with the brutality and, uh, and, and, and life and death uh, uh, issues in, in his book, I, again I felt this uh, uh, closeness. Is it the, uh, the, nature, the nature is a kind of um, battlefield? I would like to refer to something you said in an interview with you about the nature that is not cruel, it's arbitrary, that it's better to know it, but it's not that the nature itself it's, uh, is cruel. You describe quite a cruel nature in your novel. Um, I don't want to make a spoil to those who didn't read it. And I remember from an interview you had a few years ago that you are laughing a little about these people from the city who buy a fancy jeep and go to the desert and then they get lost because they don't yeah. know the nature. And it could be dangerous not to know this nature, arbitrary or cruel. No, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, arbitrary, it's indifferent. When an earthquake it, uh, happens, uh, no difference between if if you are in a city or you have children or if you are Israeli or Spanish, just happen. 
and and that's all. It's nature is the background of our life, and it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very delicate background uh, at all because um, we are in in the nature, out in the open. Um, we depend of of the nature, and we are. We, we need to be um, to deal with with nature in a in a proper way, caring for nature. But anyway, um, if you are uh, always, we are alone, and, and nature is indifferent for us. I, I like the knowledge of of nature because it, in a way, it it makes m you more relaxed when you go out and you know the names of the different animals and the different plants. You know the first thing. Uh, uh, man did in the Bible after the creation of, of the world after God created the animals the first thing man did was to give them names uh, uh, to all these animals because this is how he could feel more intimate more knowledgeable uh, w with the animals and more relaxed I guess in, in, in their, in their uh, presence but in my, I don't think in my book nature is cruel. I mean, there is a terrible tragedy when a poisonous snake bites a little boy and, and kills him, but this is not cruelty. This is the way snakes behave. This is how they are programmed uh, to behave. But there is uh, cruelty in both books, by, by Jesus' book and my book, uh, from the human characters uh, um, of, of, of the books. They are the, the cruel people, the cruel characters. About, about the, you, you have mentioned the words when you are go out to the countryside and you recognize or you know the name of a plant, of animals, of, of stones. For me, this is a really important point because this is the beginning of love. When you know something, you're ready to love. When you know what's the name of this, or, or, or if it worked for you as a poison or, or, or not, um, when you recognize your environment, you're ready to carry it, you're ready to love it. When you are in ignorant, when you are, for example, in this place or in a city, or and you don't know anything about which is around you, you are ready to be uh, brutal, or you are ready to do nothing, not learning. When you know what's around you, you're ready to love, you're ready to care. And, and it's, it's, I think it's a very useful experience when you're sharing your life with a person, for example. It, it, this is my experience, of course. I love more her, in this case, when I m more know her, mm -hmm. uh, when I'm going deep her. And I, I, I feel the love is growing me in, in this way, by the way of the knowledge. Th there is something I wanted to ask you, and since I, I read your book, is that um, um, my book, um, uh, Stein du Beam, was criticized by, by some of the readers as being immoral immoral book. Uh, because uh, there, are, there are people who kill other people as, as vendettas, as revenges, and uh, none of them is punished. One of them is even cured by this uh, murder, by this uh, 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 revenge he, he, he performs. Uh, and some of the readers thought this is immoral and that uh, in a way they let me understand that maybe uh, literature should educate the reader to become a better person, more moralistic, not only more knowledgeable, but, but a moralistic person, uh, gave me a role I never asked for, to be a teacher or a preacher or a rabbi or a priest or another Israeli author who is not myself. Uh, uh, did you get some reactions like this uh, when, when your book was published? Because your book is also uh, the relationships between people in your book are horrible. Yes, I received this, these critics. So you can suppose that we are talking about the same book in some, <laughs> in some ways, no? but it's not the same, uh, the same book. Yes, I've received these critics as well. But I think literature um, is a good, it's a good way of knowledge, um, um, the transmission of beauty. But uh, I think the good literature give more, give questions, no answers. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I, I, who I am to give them uh, the solution of the problems. I prefer to share with the readers my own questions, my own worries. And this is for me the best, the best way of literature. When, when, when give you more questions, 
when you make more complex your your map of the world. I, I want to tell the, the people some some uh, uh, elements in in your in your book without any spoiler. I will not uh, uh, tell anything that that uh, will destroy the, the reading. Uh, it's it's about a, a, a boy who runs away from home and from his village, hiding somewhere in a very uh, extreme terrain. Uh, he is hunted uh, down by by people from the village. We don't know why uh, he ran away, and we don't exactly know in the beginning who are the people who are looking for him. Uh, but he meets an old shepherd in in the prairie or in the in, in this area, and they 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 start moving together. I'm talking in a very general way, so I will not spoil I will not spoil the book. Did 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 you try to? To put yourself uh, in in the place of one of your characters while writing your book, did you see yourself as the little boy, as the shepherd, God forbid, as the policeman? Did did you think about yourself in this frame you created? Of course, that frame is um, is a very well known frame for me. Is my village. I I my birthplace is uh, Olivenza in Badajoz in the Portuguese border. But where I was for my family moved to Torrijos, which is a village in the south of Madrid, in the central region of Spain, which happens, which is a where the novel is set. Um, of course, I know perfectly the hole. I know perfectly the old trees. I know perfectly the sensations. I, I've never get insulated as a as a boy, um, but um, I know perfectly the character and especially the the landscape. My my idea was talk about the character depicting the atmosphere, <laughs> depicting the background, talking about weather, talking about trees, talking about plants, mm -hmm. talking about f the flat landscape. That was my trick to talk about the soul of and, and the psychology of the characters. That was, um, but I know perfectly the, the places. And I, I think it happens in every novel. Every character has different ingredients from different people you, you met. For example, uh, the shepherd has an important part of my father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, which was a, um, my father, of course, um, um, which was a really silent man. He teach me a lot. He was my father. And most of the things that teach me was in silence, just doing things. Never said me how to deal with many things in life. He said, okay, go on. Try it by by yourself, and then go back. And is your is your father? I'm sorry to ask. Is your is your father still alive? No, my father died in in ten two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but this was uh, this part of the of the of the character of the shepherd. It's from my father, for example. Yeah, I wanted to know whether he, I understand he did not have the chance to read your book. No. No, no. This I a wanted to know his uh, his thoughts, his reactions. No, this is a something um, uh, terrible for me. When my father died, I was in Colombia, mm -hmm. and I received a, a, a call from from my wife in the middle of the night. Said your father has died, had half died. Huh? So I took a, a plane, different planes. Um, I, I I bought a, a pill, a, a box of pills to get sleeping <laughs> in the plane. Um, and my father never, never knew my the success of my of my first novel. Never read. Um, it's something that I can do. I, I would like to go back. And did, did relatives him. of your family recognize your father in in your book? Yes, especially because my my relatives and I have tons of relatives. <laughs> they all recognized themselves <laughs> in my in my novels, <laughs> and they were very angry at me for. <laughs> For for not telling the truth and for telling the truth, <laughs> so I had a lot of discussions with them. No, in, in my second novel, especially uh, the Herd with Trev, um, I give a lot of uh, message to messages to my family in different characters and different situations. And when my my mother read the novel, my mother is not a reader; she's a reader of fiction. Um, and when she read the, the book, when when she read this book, said. Oh my God! What have I done with you? What <laughs> happened? With <laughs> so Who are you? It's more local than we we talked before that um, about a local or a nowhere uh, special place uh, literature. 
and uh, it happened to be more local than I thought because you even uh, inspired with your characters uh, from uh, people for family. I wouldn't ask if, if it's, your, it's your father. The shepherd has no age, mm. and the, girl, the, the boy either, by the way. Um, this localism, um, okay, um, Mayor, you're quite committed with local literature, yes. right? Although I, I, like, I like to read <laughs> local literature, and I also write local literature, and I believe <coughs> that people, people all over the world are much more similar to each other. Different cultures and different nations and countries are similar to each other more than they are ready to, to admit. Uh, I, I had, for, for example, uh, um, I once was uh, uh, stopped by a, a policeman who was a Druze policeman for committing uh, traffic uh, violations, but he recognized me and he said, uh, um, and there is one, and one other thing I want to tell you, he says, if you think your book, uh, Roman Rossi, was written about Nahalal, you are completely wrong. <laughs> this book is about Dalia Tel Carmen, <laughs> and, and um, wi which is a, a Druze. Druze is, is an uh, Arabic group uh, uh, in Israel, different in religion. And, and uh, he let me understand that he found his family and, uh, uh, in my book very easily. Uh, and, and I also had a review about my book, uh, children book, um, Abba Osebu Shot, my, my father always embarrasses me, it's a, a children's book that was published in, in Japan and, and one critic wrote in, in a Japanese paper, we will never understand how a Western writer could go so deep into the psychology of the Japanese family. <laughs> so <coughs> I, think, I, I, I think the local literature is really the most universal literature I also think that it's, it's the true uh, storytelling. When somebody tells about his landscape, his place, uh, 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 you have it, by the way, in one of the chapters of, uh, of uh, Erich Kestner, I think in Pitzponet and Anton, when the waiter tells him uh, in the coffee, coffee shop, a writer should write about his place, his people, and not about the South Sea or something. Uh, uh, like this, and this is the kind of, of books that I like to read from other countries. Look, if, if as a child I admired and loved so much uh, Tom Sawyer by, by, by Mark Twain, who is written about a small uh, town uh, 150 years before me in a completely different place and atmosphere, and yet I could feel this is my place and my friends. I absolutely agree. It's, a, it's the best way to talk about the human beings. It's talking <coughs> about yourself and the, your local point of view. This is it's absolutely clear for me. This this point. Um, I was I, I, w I wanted to talk about something, but I forget. Okay. <laughs> so Let's sorry. Read something. You will remi remember soon. I have a joke or something because, <laughs> uh, um, but I don't remember. Your, the sorry. only thing with the lo the only problem with the local is that for your translators. You are a nightmare with, with uh, uh, try to uh, uh, decipher uh, the exact words of the flora and fauna, very typical to your country, to your countryside. Uh, and um, I prepare a list of the Latin names for all my translators, and, and they <laughs> use it. Yeah, I, 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 I make drawings. I draw. You draw. Yeah, right. I draw. Uh, he's, he's a great illustrator. I just got. Uh, my copy of Tachat uh, Kipata uh, Shemaim dedicated to me by Jesus, and this is his drawing of an oak tree. It's, it's, in it's, it's in a special Spain. dedication. I can't, I can't do this in every book. <laughs> so I'm sorry. It's half an hour the drawing. <laughs> Different pens. And Let's a little taste, just a little, also in Spanish and in Hebrew. Um, just listen. Uh, about this uh, local landscape, okay? We'll start with a very short uh, passage from Jesus' book in Spanish, then I read it in Hebrew, and then uh, from uh, Meir uh, in Hebrew, and with some translation into, into Spanish, okay? Let's go. An anybody speak Spanish or understand Spanish? Yeah. Everybody? Why are we talking English? <laughs> okay. Right. 
Ah, Fran, intentaré. El chico escuchó la palabra alguacil en boca del pastor y sintió como la sangre le ardía en los talones y como esa flama subía desde el suelo y le abrasaba por dentro, como solo lo hace la vergüenza. Escuchar el nombre de Satán en labios de otro y sentir como la palabra derribaba los muros en los que él vivía su oprobio. Verse desnudo frente al viejo y frente al mundo. El chico retrocedió un par de pasos y se acuclilló contra la muralla tibia y pedregosa. Sintió el tacto de la áspera piel de la roca y allí fue cuadrando, una por una, las piezas que el llano le había entregado. Pensó que precisamente en aquel lugar, fuera de la jurisdicción del alguacil y lejos de pueblos habitados, podrían hacer con él lo que quisieran. Solo las piedras serían testigos de los desgarros y de la muerte que había de seguirlos. Se puso de pie. Okay. Um... They use in the translation, uh, the translation took the word shoter uh, for alguacil. It's, uh, it's a compromise. Um, it should be like something like sheriff. Uh, Talitzan herself said it. Uh, it was to choose between sheriff and, and shoter. So it's a kind of sh sheriff. Ayelet shema et amila shoter ha shoter mi pi haroe וחש כיצד הדם בוער בעקביו, ואיך הלהבה הזאת עולה מן הקרקע ושורפת אותו בתוכו, כמו שרק הבושה יכולה. לשמוע את שם השטן מפיו של אחר, ולהרגיש איך המילה ממוטטת את החומות שבתוכן הוא חי עם חרפתו. לראות את עצמו ערום ועריה בפני הזקן והעולם. הנער נסוג כמה צעדים, וחרה על ברכיו לצד חומת האבן החמימה. הוא חש את מגע אורה המחוספס של האבן, ומסגר אחת לאחת את התמונות שהציע לו המישור. דווקא במקום הזה חשב, מחוץ לתחום שיפוטו של השוטר, והרחק ממקום יישוב, יוכלו לעשות בו כאוות נפשם. רק האבנים יהיו עדות לשיסוע ולמוות שיבוא בעקבותיו. הוא קם על רגליו. חולצה צהבהבה בהירה ומעיל אור שחור ופתוח שגזרתו גזרת מקטורן. לרגליו נעל מגפיים נמוכים, חרטומיהם רבועים וסולייתם סוליית אור דקה שהעידה על חוסר ניסיון מהסוג הגרוע ביותר, זה המעורב בביטחון עצמי מופרז ובעצלות פשוטה. היית נתבונן בו מסתר מחבואו, ניקע את מחשבתו משנאה וממזימה שלא ירגיש הקורבן בקיומו וברצונו. שב ושינן לו שהמעשה שהוא עומד לעשות אינו מעשה רע, הרוע קורן למרחקים, ומי שליבו מלא בו חש בקלות את רוע הלב של הזולת, אבל הטוב והנכון והראוי לעשותו חבויים ושקטים ולא מסגירים את בעליהם גם כשהוא קרוב. האיש שב והחליק על הסלעים הרטובים מטל, ובכל פעם שמעד קילל בקול רם. איתן ליווה אותו במבטו ואמר בליבו שרק כך יש לפגוש חלאת אדם מסוגו, פגישה ראשונה ואחרונה, ברגעיו האחרונים ממש. האיש קרא ארצה, זחל על ארבעותיו, הזיז והפך אבנים, וכשנואש מחיפושיו, והוציא טלפון סלולרי מכיס מעילו, ירה בו איתן את העירייה שלשמה בא. Sorry for the Israeli accent. El hombre volvió a resbalar sobre las rocas mojadas de rocío y cada vez que se caía volvía a maldecir gritando. Eitan le siguió con la mirada y susurró para sus adentros que solamente así podía llegar a conocerse semejante escoria. Primer y último encuentro, en esos sus últimos momentos de existencia. Le dejó llegar al enorme algarrobo, comprobó que se agachaba, tanteaba, buscaba y supo que ese era el hombre a quien esperaba. El hombre se agazapó, caminó a gatas, movió y removió las piedras. Eitan sabía que no se molestaría en devolverlas a su lugar. Cuando se desesperó de su búsqueda, sabía que se iba a desesperar y sacó el móvil de su bolsillo, sabía que iba a querer contarle algo al hombre que le había enviado, le disparó el balazo por el que ha... Por el que ahí se encontraba. The stone in both both paragraph the stone in uh, your your paragraph uh, mayor. 
not knowing the shape of how to move back a stone to his place can cause you not to decipher a crime and yes. to confuse a crime with uh, accidental death. In your case, the stone is the only testimony for a crime. No land. No witnesses. No witnesses. Just the stones. Well, in this in in this country, where stones are the <laughs> mem memory technique for history, for uh, uh, political disputes, uh, for local wars between two group of uh, groups of people, till this day, since uh, David killed Goliath uh, with a stone, we still <laughs> throw stones at each other in in this country. It's 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 um, it's the most basic. Uh, one of the most basic uh, way of connecting to our history, to our uh, personality as, as people and, and as a country. In, in Spanish we, we have um, a sentence to say, um, si las piedras hablaran, if the stones could talk. Yeah. No? As, a, as a blind witnesses of the reality. For example, what happened here 20 years ago or you know, in Jerusalem, the old city, or the stones are always there. They can talk. And here in Jerusalem, one stone can be, as uh, I mean, stones are very old usually, uh, could serve as a, a, an ark in, in our first uh, temple, as a, as a tool of the Neanderthal man, then as a tomb of a holy uh, Muslim prophet, then as a, a step. Uh, in one of the alleys, and then there's a stone that somebody throws at, at, his, at his neighbor. I mean, stones are changing roles along history all, 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 all the time. It's really useful. Very it's useful. <laughs> really useful. If we didn't have stones in Israel, I don't know what we could, we could do, you know. We can't eat uh, <laughs> stones, is it only? Yeah. Stones are our best friends. <laughs> Let's talk about influences or sources of inspiration, and I let you ask him about the author. Well, I, I I I read I I made a little research before you came, and I read about you. Very easy these days, and and uh, I I saw a, a, a claim or a, a critics who wrote that that you're. Uh, um, cl very close to Cormac McCarthy, the, the American author, whom I like very much, especially his book uh, No Country for Old Men, which which I really uh, I read more than once, and and uh, I wanted to ask you if if it's if uh, you know Cormac McCarthy and what's your opinion about him? I I don't know personally, but I'm I'm a hard reader of Cormac McCarthy. Um, he came to me when I was 32 or 33 years old. Um, I get amused because um, the way that he depicts, uh, he describes nature, and especially the relationship between the, na the nature and the human being, uh, I loved. Um, one of my favorite books of McCarthy is uh, Blood Meridian, and this trilogy of, uh, of the frontier, you know, where mm -hmm. he describes all these deserts and the south of North America and the north of Mexico. And I love the way that he described nature and this relationship, but I love the way that he can, he's able to introduce poetry on the prose, underneath. Because, because we, when, when you read a description of McCarthy, you are sometimes, are, I, I think I read in poetry in some ways. Um, he, he's um, so clever for that. I, I, I love his writing. And when I, when I received the first comparison with McCarthy, it's not, a, of course, quality comparison, it's just a label. Because um, I came out, in when I, 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 nobody knows me before in Tempedia, out in the open, and the first critic says, he's similar to Cormac McCarthy, in order to, you know, to put in one place. Because I know I'm not like, I don't know, Isabel Allende, for example, it's a different style. I'm like Cormac McCarthy. And the second journalist took this review and said, oh, it's like a Cormac McCarthy and another, I another, see. another. I, another. I did not think, I know Cormac McCarthy, not personally too, but quite well, the, the road and no country for old men. And I didn't talk, I didn't think you remind me of Cormac uh, McCarthy, but now after I read it, uh, I, I think there is also something in the, 
in the dryness of, of, of the style, uh, which I like in, in your book and in, in, in his books. So there's something, uh, even though the, uh, the books are written in two different languages, there is some similarity in the style, which is, is, which is dry uh, in, in, in the right way. I think we are agree in, the, in, the, in this part of the MacArthur's books is a precision, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's one of the, the things I love on MacArthur, the, the, the way that he is able to define with a very detailed precision every stone or every filling. And I love that. It's, it's, and give to the text that this sensation of simplicity or essential writing, you know, just describing and getting apart and never judging, just describing with a very detailed precision. I love that way of writing. אז אנחנו ממליצים גם על קורמק מקארתי. We have a surprise for you. Welcome, קורמק. Come on. No, it's not. Alongside with a disrespectable list, they say also more in Spain, they compare you also with Miguel de Libes, one of the very important author, Spanish author of 20th century, translated into Hebrew, Akdoshim Atmimim, Santos Inocentes. Um, I also see influence of the picaresque um, novel. Uh, the picaresque novel, just in one, one sentence, is a uh, genre between the Renaissance and Baroque, uh, Spanish Renaissance and Baroque, that lo after that spread to the rest of Europe, which is a uh, hero protagonist, is someone who's out of the law, is running also, and he's not a criminal, he's a rented criminal, but he getting close to uh, commit criminals in order to survive, not because of being a bad person. And for example, in uh, Lazario de Tormes, also translated into Hebrew, uh, Lazario, which is the picaresque, is um, a serving a blind man. And it's funny that like the cripple in, in your novel, the blind man and the cripple man, uh, they don't uh, inspire us mercy, but they are evil, in spite or because yeah. of their. Uh, this was a very. I, I thought it was a, a, a very original when I read about your crippled man, man in in your book. The the way um, you described this character was very original, very different. It was a guy um, in my village. Yeah. In, in this, yeah, uh, I was ins inspired me to, to this character. I remember when I was a child, a man. It's, it's, it's not the 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 man you have seen. It's another man in the mo in the book which is moving, escorted by by the dogs. He was um, moving a, a, a chair with a handle like this, like a organ grinder. You know, moving this. Ah, he moved hand. the wheels of the chair yeah. with his hands. Yeah, with the hands. And there was, was a man like this in an institute near the place where I grew up in Jerusalem. It was near the Blind Men Institute, and the guard there used to ride. Uh, was also a, a crippled person, and he moved on a huge wheelchair with with this wheel that he drove like this. And we, the children in the neighborhood, thought he's some kind of a mythological monster. Yeah. He was so scary because he moved so quickly with this. Uh, he was chasing us when we sneaked into the garden of <laughs> Beit Chinuch Ivrim, of the Blind Man <laughs> Institute. And he, he I, I described him in, uh, in, 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 a, in one of my book co books called Beveitova Midbar. Um, uh, without giving the, the true name, but but he was one of the the dark uh, figures of my childhood. Isn't it amazing? We have been so writing for I don't know how distance in between Spain and Israel. We're different generations, mm -hmm. but we are writing the same book. We are surrounded <laughs> by the same crippled people. Yeah, and I have yeah. to say something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> may I have to go just very quickly because I have another event now. But I I, I will go uh, sign here. His books, and because yeah. <laughs> if I think it's okay, no? Please, please do in Hebrew. But, but with 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 illustrations. Yeah. Okay, with illustrations <laughs> and with my invented Hebrew. <laughs> Another influence I saw, but again, what what do we say about that is uh, of uh, the Mexican Juan Rufo and uh, May, which already introduced us to the. Uh, uh, magic realism of Jerusalem, 
Um, your books are uh, been said been inspired from the uh, magic realism, which is a concept, Latin American concept, uh, made by um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. We all know here. I don't here. think he made this term, but he, he, he wrote like in this wrote way. I don't know who. I, I, I don't accept this terminology. Um, I don't think there is something like magic realism in, in literature. I think there is imagination. And some authors have a lot of imagination, and some authors have less imagination, and some authors have this tendency to be, to describe uh, uh, their stories with a lot of uh, creative imagination. But this magic realism, I think, is a I invention of, of literature scholars who like to, uh, uh, like any other scientist, to put phenomena into different boxes, into different uh, categories. So once I was blamed for belonging for the picaresque uh, genre, and then later to the <laughs> magic realism. But basically, I, I imitate the way my grandmother used to tell stories when I, when I was a little boy. This is uh, the real influence. I remember when I was in, uh, in Moscow for the first time, after my first book was published there, and, and, uh, and people asked me there, who are the Russian authors? or storytellers that influenced me. And I said, well, there was Gogol, uh, of course. I said I was influenced by four great Russian storytellers. It's uh, Gogol, uh, uh, Nabokov, Bulgakov, and uh, Tonya Benbarak, whom, <laughs> whom you don't know, my grandmother, uh, who is, was a great Russian storyteller living in Israel. Yeah. And in that way, um, another connection, it's, it's not prepared, <laughs> but my mother is a great storyteller and every summer we join her in, the, in our village in Extremadura, in Feria, just to listen to her because she, she tells the, the family stories so beautifully and funny and she's, she, she, she doesn't want to do it, but she's natural way of telling and I'm, I'm sure that it's... Uh, is that that stories are in the origin of my vocation as a writer. Listen to my mother did, did, telling did the stories tell of the story? family. Did she tell a story about a donkey that flew up in the air at night? Because no. <laughs> <laughs> no. this is one of the great stories of my grandmother, wow. no. it's, which is real magic realism. Go on. Thinking of it. <laughs> yeah. The magic realism later became also a publishing phenomenon. The, the publishers uh, going a comfort that this is something that uh, sell books, mm -hmm. so they kept it alive. The um, the Latin American. Um, it's outlet. important to sell books, huh? It's important. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm, I'm agree. And sometimes we can reject these labels, you know, yes. Re realism, magic realism, or another realism, or whatever. But it are really. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they are really useful for sell books, in order to to give information to the readers. Or we are. Talking it's about it's existent phenomenon, although you you can deny it, but because all the not all but writers, uh, Latin American writers here today, try to escape from mm -hmm. this shadow, which this is the best proof that it's something that exists. Okay, we can we can't deny like it or not. Maybe in South America. Okay. <laughs> so it failed to import it to here by your books, the Bible, the Bible. If we. Uh, speak about influence sources. I don't think we have to uh, say much about that in yeah, your... I, I, um, already, I already admit, admitted many times, and I confessed many times, that the Bible influences me a lot. I'm talking about the Hebrew Bible, of course, uh, the Old Testament, uh, not only in, in themes and stories, but also uh, in the way the Bible uh, does not force too much psychology on the reader. This is something I don't like as a reader, when there is too much psychology supplied by the author, explaining every move and every thought of, of, of the characters. And I like something to be left for me to decide why why did he do such a thing, or why did she, did she say such a sentence. And the Bible is, is very efficient in, in, in this way of not telling, the, uh, not revealing the psychological depth 
of uh, many of its characters, just leaving it to the reader in a in a sort of a stingy uh, 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 way. For the classic uh, example that 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 I can give is a is is a. a for example, why did Jacob start crying when he met Rachel for the first time? And uh, uh, I know many authors, modern authors, who will give about 20 pages of explanation to, to this crying. And the Bible just said that Jacob cried when he met Rachel. He did some other things. He gave water to her sheep and uh, he kissed her, which is also a kind of surprise. And, and, and then he cried. And we have to think about it. Why? Why did he do it? I mean, he never met her before. Uh, there was nothing uh, really uh, sad about their meeting. Of course, it was very excited. But the reason for this cry is something for each reader to, to interpret and, and understand. And I like it in, in the biblical uh, uh, style. The uh, shepherd that seems to be an alphabet reading the Bible. Yes, this is sort of the source of morality for him. And for me it's important as well, another connection. Uh, the Bible, because this is a book that my father read. Um, my father was the only one reader at home, and he was only always in reading in the afternoons, reading Bible or other religious books especially. And it's important for me in that, in that sense, and as well in the, in the style that is right in the Bible. Uh, um, of course, I'm agreed it's really efficient as, as a tale and have these blank gaps to interpret and to yeah. go inside yeah. and to make yourself, you, you know, to attract the Bible to you or the text. Um, but the style for me is uh, so precious, so poetic, and this um, mythic style, so open and wide. And you can, for me, it's a, it's a great influence in that, in that sense, in the stylus uh, sense. Your landscape also could look like a biblical landscape. In some ways, it's all essential. It's Although it's in Spain, we know yeah. it. But. Um, violence, Bible, violence goes together. You both seem so nice, relaxed, charming family man with uh, little kids, little grandchildren. Yeah. And from where all this violence come from? It's it's a fantasy. It's is by writing it. It's uh, protecting you from commit yourself something. Um, is it is it it could work the same way on the reader? It's instead of realize this fantasy and commit something violent. What is this relation with so much violent? Is that exactly my my mother's question to me? <laughs> <laughs> Where is this coming from? <laughs> yeah, wh when I published uh, Stein du Bim. I got several phone calls from people, well not intimate friends, but people I know, who who called me and said, "Hello." I said, "Yes." Is is everything all right? <laughs> this is anything happened lately? <coughs> and and uh, look, I think I think artists in general and and authors uh, in particular should not deny any human phenomena, and and I think we should deal. Uh, with love and with hate and with memory and death and fidelity and infidelity and 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 uh, sadness and happiness and also in revenge which i think is a very very strong human uh, trait both theoretically and and both practically uh, i think each of the people of the men and women who sit now here in this auditorium i think had once or twice in their lives a hypothetical wish of somebody to disappear from under the sun, you know, to completely uh, vanish or, 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 or perish in, a, in an un, un, re, unreversible manner. <laughs> uh, I, I think we all know this feeling. Uh, usually we don't do anything about it, either because we are good uh, citizens and moralistic people, or because we are afraid of the police, which is the truth about me. Uh, uh, and and, and in, in, in this book, I, I described uh, 
three killings. One is a man who, who killed the, the lover of his wife. One is a blood revenge, uh, a man who kills uh, somebody who killed a relative, a beloved relative. And one is a horrible thing that I w don't want to go into details here because it will be a, s a spoiler. I, I can tell you that I could never see myself as somebody who will kill the lover of his, uh, of his partner. Um, it, it's, it's not my type. It's not my, my way of uh, thinking. And, and I don't even know his name, so... Uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I can see myself, theoretically, uh, uh, going to, to the blood revenge. If, if somebody will, will kill, God forbid, chas uh, v'chalila, uh, um, a relative, a, a, a close and beloved relative, I can see myself considering this possibility. And again, the, the, the stop between me, the, the barrier between me and, and the revenge will be uh, my, my being a law-abiding citizen, not, not moralistic uh, uh, thinking. So it was interesting to me while writing these passages and also while doing the research, because I met for these descriptions and interviewed uh, police officers, uh, a professional killer uh, in, on pension, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who lives in Israel, uh, uh, two snipers. Uh, what are friends? Yeah, I got some friends, yes. Well. Uh, some were friends even before I wrote the book. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking all the time, what, what would, would I do in, in such sit situation? All the time while writing the book, I was thinking about each of these characters. Uh, uh, and myself, comparing him uh, uh, to myself, and, and, and I think it, it gave the book uh, some kind of a power that I did not have in, in other books. I think it's, it's one of our, of, um, of our duties to explore um, the things out of ourselves. For example, you say, we are family man, quiet persons, charming, handsome, you know, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> And you write both uh, on violence and this cruelty. How can you do? As my mother said. Um, I think I, I like to explore the boundaries of reality and take the character and, and put in the extreme part of of my own behavior. For example, this I recognize perfectly. This if my daughter is uh, under menace of her, her life, I I can kill. Of course, it's, I think it's the only one reason because I can kill. Uh, but I consider, of course, uh, as well this um, this occasion. But I like to explore this, th the periphery of my own psychology. I'm a quiet person, but I like to know what's happening in the other side of the fence. Um, and of course, because I'm I'm worried about violence, um, I write in in that way for for that reason as well. I try to know. I try to to understand what's happening. Why the people is uh, able to kill another, or, or this kind of behaviors that I can't do in b by myself? So your landscapes, but not your deeds, or maybe your thoughts, your ex uh, explore, but not your. Deeds. Yeah, for example, uh, it's, it's, um, the, the the history of literature is full of these examples. For example, um, I'm, I'm thinking now Agatha Christie. Uh, she wrote a very um, mysterious and murderous and stories and she was a very polite lady you know taking tea at five o'clock and her novels are full of dead people and killers and and she's she was really polite or it looks like I, I never met her it's called s being psych psychopathic no yeah um i would like to talk also about re revenging as a tikkun as repairing tikkun is a is a hebrew um maybe I should say Jewish expression, tikkun, from fixing something, or tikkun olam, fixing the world, repairing. Um, if the revenge can be also repairing, or the revenge itself is a repairing. Um, I don't know if you have time to speak about this. Well, I can say very shortly that <laughs> in, in my book there is one case in which the, the man who, who uh, 
performs the the blood revenge is is cured by by doing it uh, um, I know this is not a very moralistic description, but this is, that's what happened in my book, and I believe it can happen in 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 reality too. And if we talk about morality and the the role of the author in the human society, then again, I don't see myself as a prophet or moral uh, example, or and I don't have the wish uh, to to make you better people. Uh, you're already better, and and I, uh, I feel my, my only obligation is to tell a good story in a good artistic uh, uh, manner. I don't have other obligations to, to, to other people. Neither. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I read in, t in an interview that what you didn't take in account by writing Boo by becoming author is that you'll have to travel and to be uh, far away from your family to promote your books. So um, thank you very much for choosing being with us. And uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank and you. Um, I also I also want to thank you for conducting this interview with, very professionally and without asking us one political question. Okay. Which is very nice of you. This, um, yeah. this um, talk was also organized with collaboration of the Cervantes Institute, the Spanish uh, Institute in Tel Aviv. And uh, Jesus and uh, Mayer uh, are going to sign their books. And when uh, or Mayer or has to live, uh, in the, they tell me in the um, library uh, um, where, where the books of are sell in Tzomet, yes. So follow us to, to there. Thank you.